You know, as a lawyer, I was representing a bunch of technology companies in the 1990s. And these companies were working with binary code, ones and zeros, doing phenomenal things with ones and zeros. Uh, the gamers, the multimedia guys, the website guys, the dot comers, that was doing incredible things with binary code. Well, one day I woke up to the reality of what DNA is, the digital code that's inherent in all living things, all organic life on Earth, from a palm tree to a, a rose bush to an elephant to you and I. It's just instead of binary code, which is two digits, we've got DNA, four-digit code. Um, phenomenal when you look at just information theory itself. And so I started to realize that, that we have huge teams of computer programmers. Uh, let's just take Redmond Washington as an example with Microsoft. They added 12,000 uh, software programs, programmers and engineers recently at that, that huge expanded campus. And all of the trillions of dollars and millions of man hours that go into developing code off of ones and zeros. And then you look at this incredible storehouse of genetic information, these, these genetic blueprints inherent in DNA or this digital code. And, and I don't just, I don't even see the miracle in it. It's, 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 it's redundant, it's error correcting, it's self replicating, it's phenomenal in its structure. Uh, if you were to put all of the code into books, you, you could fill the Grand Canyon a few times over with just the digital instructions, the code that's inherent in you and I. Now, beyond the code itself, what, what about the application software that's reading this code, that, that's interpreting this code to develop one kind of cell to be an eye cell and another kind of cell to be a skin cell and another kind of cell to be a, you know, something to do with the lungs and another cell to be something to do with the brain. It's just phenomenal. Uh, I like the picture of uh, the midnight ride of Paul Revere. You know, the, the one if by land, two if by sea, right? Code means nothing unless someone shares the language convention with you. So that night, if, if Paul Revere didn't have an associate who understand that one meant if by land and two if by sea, then that binary code means nothing because nobody can interpret it. Well, it's the same with DNA, the four-digit code. We have this incredible storehouse of all these genetic instructions, but what's the language convention, the shared language convention that's reading this code? It, it boggles my mind. So I, I really did wake up one day to the fact that where does information come from? Can it arise randomly by chance out of some primordial goop? Or does information code have to be programmed? Does it actually have to be written as any other code that we deal with today? So I just ask you to think on that. Um, Francis Crick was one of the co-discoverers of the DNA molecule in the 1950s. And he couldn't really reconcile what he discovered with DNA, with his naturalistic, materialistic, atheistic philosophy. You see, he knew information code couldn't just pop out of the primordial goop. Information code has to be written. So he created these spores from outer space theory, which basically says alien cultures must have launched it here uh, millions and millions of years ago to somehow start the process on a, on a prebiotic Earth. Huh. Sounds like... Uh, Quite a, quite a scientific, uh, no, rather a philosophical conjecture there. But uh, I just, uh, just ask you guys to check this stuff out for yourself.